So, welcome to lesson 12 in our study of optimization 2. So, we are discussing the transportation problem. And we have introduced ourselves to what a transportation problem is and how to find the initial basic feasible solution. So, in this lesson, we are going to learn how to determine the optimality of the solution using the stepping stone method okay in the next one we'll talk about the modified distribution method so once an initial solution is attained the problem must be solved using either the stepping stone method or the modified distribution method so the stepping stone method determines whether or not there exists an empty cell that would reduce cost when used so an empty cell that will reduce cost is called a potential entering variable and to evaluate the cost reduction potential of an empty cell a closed path connecting new cells to the empty cell is identified after all empty cells are evaluated the one with the greatest cost reduction potential is the entering variable right so hope you get this we well, will illustrate it with examples so you understand so when allocating units to the entering variable a minimum amount is subtracted on the stepping stone path so the stepping stone process is repeated until no empty cell reduces cost and when that happens that means we have an optimal solution so a multiple optimal solution occurs when an empty cell has a cost change of zero and all other cells have positive or zero cost change so note an op a multiple optimal solution occurs when an empty cell has a cost change of zero and all other empty cells have positive or zero cost change we we'll explain that don't worry and an alternate optimal solution is attained by allocating to the empty cell with a zero cost change okay all right so the steps of the stepping stone method are summarized below so one we determine the stepping stone path and cause changes for each empty cell in the tableau then we allocate as much as possible to the empty cell with the greatest net decrease in cost so we repeat these two steps until all empty cells have cost changes that indicate existence of an optimal solution so in our case when we are minimizing so we repeat steps one and two until all the empty cells have a positive or or you know negative cost change right so however if we add so take note of these points very critical however if we add or subtract one tone of to an empty cell on a row or column you must add one turn from another allocation on the same row or column so as to satisfy all rim requirements okay so note that when one unit is added to or subtracted from a cell total cost is increased or decreased by a unit cost of that cell all right so we have talked plain so now let's come back to business and illustrate it and you realize it's very simple just bring your mind here okay so we are coming to solve a full problem where we are going to apply everything that we've learned so far so it says below is a transportation problem with costs supply and demand so from these sources to these destinations right and these that you see here are the cost and these are the supply these are the demand so it says find the optimal solution using a stepping stone or the modai method use the least cost method for the starting solution so since we haven't learned the modified distribution method we are going to use a stepping stone then our next video when we learn the that method maybe we can use that one to do it okay so we have to use the least cost method 
for the starting solution that means to get the initial basic feasible solution okay so that's the first thing we have to do so getting the initial the starting solution that's the least cost method right using the least cost method so this is a table which was given to us so we asked ourselves out of all the courses that we have here the so let me do it afresh okay so that's so out of all the cells that we have here which of them has the least cost this is this three so we assign the maximum value it can take there right so the supply is 180 and the demand is 175 so that means we can only give it 175 so after that what is the next one the next one is four and this one has a supply of 100 and a demand of 170 so that means we can put all the 100 here so after that what is the next one five but this five has a supply of 180 we already have 175 so we can only put five here then after that we have another five here but we can't put anything here because the demand is 175 which is already satisfied so we can't put anything here then after five the next one is six but this six two you can see that the supply here is 180 all has been supplied so we can't put anything here otherwise it will violate the supply constraint so we have another six here and with this one two we can't put anything here because the supply is 100 and everything has been supplied so we come here the next one is seven here so we can't put anything here because this everything here has been supplied then we come here so here we have seven and when we come to this seven we need to supply 200 here and the demand here is 170 but already the 100 of it has been met so that means that we can just have 70 more here i hope you get it all right so when you have the 70 more here that means that the demand here has been met here too it has already been met right so that means we have to meet the demand here and the supply here right so we have 70 we need to supply and um, we need to supply 130 more and our 130 will come here right so that's 5 plus 130 is 135 and 130 plus 70 is 200 so using the least cost method this is our initial basic feasible solution all right so to find the cost it will be four times hundred plus five times five plus three times 175 plus eight times 130 plus seven times 70 which will give us the cost two thousand four hundred and eighty dollars okay so we have this solution by this solution the optimal solution we can tell we can only tell by using the stepping stone method or the modified distribution method but we've only learned the stepping stone method so let's use that to tell whether it's a solution or not so this is how we calculated for the the transportation cost so using the stepping stone method to check for optimality right so you remember this is what we had right this is what we had from the table okay so these are the empty cells that we have empty cell one empty cell two empty cell three and empty cell four so we would have to take each of these empty cells and calculate the cost change in that cell by using a stepping stone path right so the stepping stone path is we try to look at a path which connects that particular empty cell to itself by going through the cells which has allocations in them so when we take this cell for instance right when we take the first cell trying to look at the net change in it we will start from here when we start from here we have positive here so when we start from here the next cell the cell which has an allocation in it is what four right it has 100 here so we will come here and when you come here since we are adding a unit here we have to also subtract a unit here so that this will be met we will get store 100 we met so when we come here from here the next cell which contains 
something which has an allocation is here so we come here when we come here this also becomes positive so that this negative plus this positive will also be nullified so that it won't affect the demand and supply constraints so here since you also have plus here that means you have to get a negative somewhere right so the next cell containing or having an allocation is here so we will come here right and here will become minus then from here it moves straight forward to here right so that means that this is the path the stepping stone path for this first empty cell right so to get the next chain you to be since here is plus to be six since here is minus minus four since here is plus plus seven and minus eight then we'll get a value for it okay so that's what i've illustrated here so that part will be from x a one and this is x a one x a one here to x a three to x e three to x e one all right then we go back to the s a one so there's the path and s a one also six minus four plus seven minus eight and that will give us a change of what and plus one dollars so that means that if we put something in that cell it's going to increase what the transportation cost so we can't put anything there then after that we go to the second one right so this is an analysis so bring your mind here please so we go to the next one so let me clean this so we go to the next one and this is the next one right so here from here the next one which contains something is this so we come here now this will be minus then from here we come here this will be plus then from that we come here this will be minus we come here this will be plus okay so let me do it well so from here when you come here you move here and when you also come here you move up and when you come here you move here too then here is also minus then you come back to here so this is going to be the path for the seven so you see you always have to look for the cells which has something in them so it started from here it will come here then it will come here then it will come here it will come here it will come here then it come back to itself so the signs also alternate so trying to look for the net change the next cost change it will be the cost change will be seven minus four plus seven minus eight plus five minus three and that's what we did here and now give us plus four dollars right so that's the chain that is going to give us so let me write a plus one here so this is plus four okay so now that's it for this one <clears throat> so So let's do for the next empty cell here. All right. So with this one, so I think this is very simple. So we start from here, plus it comes here, and it goes here, minus it comes here, plus <coughs> then it goes here, minus, and it goes back to itself. All right. So this will be the stepping stone path for this empty cell right x v3 so the next change will be 6 minus 7 plus 8 minus 5 so 6 minus 7 plus 8 minus 5 which is plus 2 right so that's a path and now let's look at the last one so we had plus 2 here So with the next one which is five so here we can be here and move here come here and come here and come back to itself so this 
was a very simple one, right? So that's the part we can take. So this one to the next change will be 5 minus 8 minus 5 plus 3. Right, so 5 minus 8 plus 5 minus 8. And that one give us a net change of negative 1. So the negative, you see, you are trying to minimize, right? So it's just like when you are minimizing, we only get a minimal solution when all the CJ minus ZJ values are greater than or equal to zero. So here, since we have a negative value here, it means that when we allocate something in this cell, this cell, since it is having a minus one, it is going to reduce cost. The minus one means it's going to reduce the cost that we even have, the 2480. So we would have to allocate something there. So mostly when we go to the next iteration, what we do is that we look for the cell closer to it, which is the 130 here. And since that was the path, you see from here, we went to here. We can, because this one is taken away and this one we are adding, so we can bring all the 130 here. Then we'll just adjust the values that we had to make sure that the demand and supply is not violated, okay? So that's what we are going to do here. So in our next table, we will get 130 here. So you already know the 130 was here, but since here gives us a negative um, cost change, we put the 130 here. And when we put the 130 here, we just have to do um, changes, okay? So let me do the changes here so that you know how we did it, okay? I'm just doing the changes for you to see how it was done. Okay, so um, now we are putting 130 here. So when you put 130 here, we won't put anything here again. We've taken what we had there. So you can see that this one is satisfied, correct? But you can see that this const um, constraint is violated. We need to get just 175 here. Now this has to be 113. So it is this that we have to take something from it. That's the reason why when we're doing the path here was negative. So here we'll take 130 from this and this will give us 45. And here, if you remember when we did the path here was positive. So here we'll add the 130 to this place and we'll get 135. So you can see 135 plus 45 gives us 180. 100 plus 70 gives us 170. 45 plus 130 gives us 175. And now we have a 135, 135. So now all the rim requirements are satisfied, right? So it's based on that that we had this that you can see here. And with this one, when you look for the total transposition cost, that is 4 times 100 plus 5 times 135 plus 3 times 45 and so on. You are going to get $2,350. Then we would want to check again and see if this solution is an optimal solution using the stepping stone method. So what are the empty cells? The empty cells here, we have this, that, this, and that, right? So we would have to get a stopping path for, a stepping stone path for all of them and try to calculate their cost change to see if any of them will be negative. If none of them is um, negative, right, then it means that the solution that we have is optimum, right? And if any of them is zero, but not negative, then that means that we are going to get multiple solutions. So when we take this cell here, right, so now we have to calculate the path the stepping stone path for them. And you could see that I've done them here. And we had plus two, plus five, plus one, and plus one for all of them. So let me do some, then I'll tell you to do the rest and see whether you really get what you are doing, okay? So with the first one, this empty cell, right? We will start here. This is positive. Then we'll come here. This is negative. So from here, we come to this next cell here, all right? So, mostly when we come here, it goes down. So, when it comes here, it will go this way. So, this is positive. 
and it will come here and this is minus then when it comes here it mostly goes this way then when it comes here to go here this is positive then it goes here this is minus and we come back to where we were right so this is the part it is going to take from here from SA1 it goes to XA3 then comes to XC3 comes to XC2 then it comes to XB2 to XB1 to a, then back to the SE1 right so the next change the next change or the cost change is going to be 6 minus 4 plus 7 minus 5 plus 3 minus 5 and now give us plus 2 so please use the same concept to do for when we have it here we have it here and we have it here as well okay and that is going to give you this that we have here actually i've done that for you but <clears throat> you can pause the video and try and see so this is the part that it takes i've done those things for you <clears throat> and you realize that the cost here is 350 which was which is lesser than what we had here the two the 2480 all right and since where is it Mm -hmm. So, since all the empty cells have a positive cost change, it means an optimum solution is reached, and the total transportation is then two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. So that's the solution to the question, and we are done. You see, very simple. Yeah. So, um, see you in the next video where we talk about the modified distribution method and use that to also solve a question okay thank you very much and see you in the next video